Yeah. Huh. We all know what the intro music means, right? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's uh, it's Tune Breakdown Wednesday. Or oh. whatever, whatever we're calling it. Is that a thing? I, I didn't think, know we had a... Yeah, we do a regular Wednesday feature where well, we... Well, we do like Solo Analysis Wednesday. Solo Analysis Wednesday. <laughs> like Sorry. Tune I've been down. gone, man. I've, I've totally forgot. I like that. Tune Breakdown Wednesday. That's good. Tune well, that's, Breakdown. That's kind of going to be a little bit track. Track Breakdown. Track right? Breakdown. We've been really doing more Track Breakdown than we have that's Solo true. Analysis. That's true. Uh, and this one is a good candidate for it. Um, this is from Christian Sands' latest recording called Facing Dragons. This is the first track called Rebel Music. Yeah. Uh, and incidentally, you will be talking with Christian Sands tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. So we can, um, if we have any questions about voicings or anything that we hear on this tune, on this track breakdown, I can ask him specific technical details as well. That's great. Well, yeah. let's have a little bit of listen to Rebel Music. Okay. Who's, uh, who's in the rhythm section here with Christian? So this is Yasushi uh, Nakamura, mm-hmm. uh, affectionately known as Sushi, actually. Perfect. Uh, great young Japanese bassist, uh, really uh, kind of on the forefront of the New York scene right now. And Jerome Jennings, I believe, is on drums Ooh. out of Cleveland, Ohio. Very, very cool. Yeah. And that's oh. kind of uh, Christian's regular trio. I've, I've heard him over the last year a couple times live, and it's a really good, tight trio like working trio which yeah. is you know something that's not happening uh, all too often now so this track already has a few things that i'm a sucker for uh-huh. i'm gonna pause it yep before you get too too heavy into the solo yeah and that is the left hand piano and bass yes. ostinato yep. I, I overuse that myself quite a bit yeah <laughs> it's such it's a, fun and it sounds good <laughs> it sounds great and works and then roads and piano mix yes i mean i love them of course on their own but right. i love having a roads on the side of the piano and being able to do a two-handed thing with them right right and it's almost like uh, on this track and i think later on he gets into it some more too it's almost used as like like a pad kind of situation. Yeah. Padding. I don't know if I'm yeah. if I'm using that term correctly, but that's kind of the way that we sometimes do it with like a keyboard pad or whatever. Or a double. He, I think he's been using it as a double thing. Yep. Let's get yep. back to the solo. Okay. Huh. Hold on. Let me back it up a little more. Wait, can we listen just to the beginning again? Is that... <sighs> Fine. No, because you talk about the bass line. I love that. I want to... <sighs> I love that yeah. too. Build up to Is the bass plan with him yet? There it is. Oh, there it okay, can you pause just for a second? So th- this is a great technique for composition and I mean it seems like he's just repeating well he is repeating this line, but what's actually happening is he's introducing the thematic material. And so it, it really becomes a thing of like what is the melody, what is the main theme? Well it doesn't really matter, but it kind of does. And by doing it this way, it's almost like that's the most. There, there's going to be a melody. We know that it's coming up higher, but that bass line kind of wouldn't you say is kind of like the main theme at this it's, point. It's the opening theme for sure, it's and the and theme. the way he orchestrates it without adding the bass right away, yeah, is is really really interesting and good and uh, something that I think you know if you're if you're taking notes as a musician in a trio yes feel free to use yeah the way that you can double the instruments is super important and i think it's overlooked you know you and i have both done orchestration for orchestras and it's like the main tool in your toolbox for orchestras yes is to get different sounds by doubling so do you can do it with the bass and the piano with the drums and the piano with the drums and the bass like all these combinations and it's always a matter of like when if it's going to happen when is it going to happen because that's a built-in dramatic point for you and so the sort of typical thing, which could have worked good, would for the bass to come in and start doubling that. Um, and he plays it later, but I think that when the drums come in and it seems like the bass is going to double, double, it doesn't. So it mm. almost heightens yeah. the drama of kind of when it's going to happen. And so there's no right or wrong way to do this, but you want to kind of get a handle on how the different ways of doing it affect the architecture of the tune. And then that becomes part of your kind of compositional palette. Yeah, check it out. The bass comes in on a hit and then is in. <laughs> And, it's playing, right. and now it feels yeah. real. So then you've got that, 
you know, that that shifting. Now we're going to get into the, I guess, the real part of the tune. But this is such a great, obviously, he's setting it up for a nice segue later on, maybe yeah. something to solo over, whatever. Yeah. But, like, you're setting up this sex section, this kind of expositional expositional section. And the the harmony shifts when he goes to that sort of diminished with the raised seventh sort of thing. Yeah. But the bass line stays the same. That's another kind of technique that I recommend for aspiring composers and arrangers to have into their palette. We always think the bass line has to exactly match the harmony. Yeah. But And that can be okay, but that's a little bit corny sometimes to do that. Well, especially if you're doing something as repetitive as this ostinato. Yeah. You know, you have that, that it's like a, it becomes a pedal and you yeah. can add tension to it. And what I love about this is how patient they are before they take it to the melody you know he's he's setting it up just really nicely and that little shift yeah that little change adds a lot yep nice drumming yeah some great ride cymbal and hi-hat yeah just the right amount of yeah. auxiliary kind of work. Okay, I love that. Can you pause it? Can you hear that? Do you do it? Like the way that that kind of grace note is sort of delayed. I don't want to overanalyze. Just listen to it. If you like it, steal it because he stole it from other people. Too. And the drums, phrasing, phrasing. So now, I mean, you've got that bass line you can come to any time. You've established it, you know. Uh. Look out, look out, look out. Uh. Oh, taking it to Jazz Congress now. That's what I'm talking about. The McBride trio comes yeah, out. That's in right. It. Yeah. But the way Sands is soloing, he starts out. That's a really interesting choice because I'm always sort of my tendency at that point would be be like right in the cut, right in the time. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. and he's like very esoteric, almost like floating above it. Yeah, which is cool too because now you've got the drama of like when he does go in there right on the time. Yeah. It'll kind of sync up in a way that's that's very interesting. There's still an element floating, yeah. Even though the bass and the drums are locked in there, yeah. I mean, again. it just always shows what a great uh, instrumentation of the trio is. So is good. because you've got two and one, one and two, three all together. Yep. One, one, one. Yep. Let's check it out. That that moment out again. What's really amazing about this is uh, how um, not jagged it feels. Yeah, going yeah. between the swing and the straight. Yep, for them. Yeah, the, really the way he's soloing the signal lines and not a lot of comping of the left hand is what kind of links up those sections. Yeah, and enables bass and drums to really go straight back and forth from those two grooves. You don't feel taken out of like you don't feel like it's a drastic change. It's good. Yep. Ah, scuba doo doo go ahead. But lick exciting, lick exciting. Yeah. But this is really the first point where he's like straight in the swing. Yeah. So this is like, how far into the tune are we? Three minutes. Yeah, that's great, man. I love it. Ah, nice.
like this kind of play, I love that when you're like swinging over the groove, which, which is really what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's so great, man, as I'm listening to this, just realizing uh, even though Christian Sands is still young ish, you know, I've been following him for a long time. It feels like a long time. I've known about him and been listening to him with Christian McBride's trio and uh, just so great to hear the growth, you know? Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, and I mean, I think he's actually approaching 30. It's like funny when we think about because I've known well, him Well, I'm for, an old man now, so. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, as am I. But I mean, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember that I definitely heard him when he was like early 20s, yeah. maybe even like 20 or something. So it is fun to hear. Like, he sounds the same, Yeah. but there's been a lot of growth in his playing and music. Almost, it's almost like see growth in their their someone's musicianship when they're such a good pianist from a young age yeah you, you see more growth in their musicianship their compositional abilities ability to lead a trio ability to put together a great album which i think this album is just wonderful sounds kind of awesome from beginning to end. I mean, yeah we're yeah. only touching on the first track today but, it's, but i think even the piano stuff sounds like it's grown in the last couple of years yeah you know what i mean as I will so happen we, t- we talk about this all the time the cumulative effects of work Right. on it but yeah it sounds really great good well, stuff yeah way to go. it's funny because we're always who's it always i think it's mcbride's always calling him you saw always call him young sands like almost like it was his name young sands we'd call him that but well uh tell him i loved it even though i won't be on the episode tomorrow uh, <laughs> no, when you, you talk won't. to him uh, really really great stuff yeah that's gonna be fun we're looking forward to that tomorrow so we'll we'll go on a little deeper dive probably on this track and the album and just have some have some fun he's a really funny guy too cool so i'm looking forward to that really smart really funny of course amazing pianist he's from connecticut that's the only problem that's but we, yeah we're not gonna hold that against him well until then you'll hear it mm-hmm. 